What's up guys and ghouls and welcome to another episode of fright mike i'm liz i'm sam and today we are continuing our theme dinner parties from hell dun, dun, dun. serving you five courses of delectable <sighs> murder <laughs> frights frights and delights oh you went like a pg-13 way <laughs> i did i did you know arms and legs <laughs> And blood and gold. Bloodshed. Lots of blood. Lots of blood in this one. Oh, a lot of blood in this mm-hmm. one. Um, we are, of course, talking about Monster Party from 2018. Not to be confused with Party Monster from the early 2000s, which I love. Or Murder Party. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Jesus. There's a lot of parties. There's a lot, a lot of, parties of parties happening here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Monster Party is so chill. Was this not on Shutter? This is on Shutter, right? It was, yeah. It's on Tubi right now, which is for free for everybody. So, again, if you haven't watched this movie, go check it out on Tubi for free and then listen to the podcast. It's a good time. If you're into it's like fun. movies like You're um, your Next or um, like Ready or Not, I think mm-hmm. you'd like. If you've ever watched Monster Vicious Party. Fun, it's kind of like that too. Exactly. Like Shit Goes Bananas. Mm-hmm. But it's also kind of like, I guess this isn't, this isn't funny, but it. It feels more lighthearted in a way. It's like it's kind of funny. Yeah. It's not funny, but it's kind of funny. Yeah, it's like goofy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's a wild ride. It definitely it is. It takes some turns that you don't... You know, it's like one of those movies where you know that something's up, and, but you can't... You don't know why, like yeah. what it is until it happens. And then when it happens, you're like, oh shit. Oh dang, oh dang. Especially with a title like Monster Party. Right. You know something's about to go down. This movie feels like a combination of, uh, like, Don't Breathe meets, like, Satanic Panic meets... But you're not. Yeah. 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 I I would say so. That's a good mix. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you're in any of those movies, you'd probably be into this movie. Yeah. I agree. Although I don't know if everyone agrees because it currently has a 5.5 out of 10 on IMDb. Well, I don't know because the pendulum swings the other way. It's at 77% of Rotten Ooh. Tomatoes. Okay. I know. I know. I'm staying corrected. I know. And I know we, we uh, failed to realize that we didn't do the scores for last week's movie. Which so... were also 5.5 out of 10. And it was an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. If I'm not mistaken, let me go back and check my notes. Yes, it was an 80%. So the Feast and Monster Party are actually very closely... Um, rated yes which is interesting because the vibes are completely different oh yeah 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 this is um quite the turn last week was more of a slow burn eco folk horror type movie um kind of in the same vein as like midsummer Mm -hmm. i don't want to say the witch i was gonna say the ruins for some reason (laughs) the ruins yeah really i don't know why Maybe because the plants are... Well... The plants. <laughs> Spoiler. It's the plants. It's the plants. Maybe not Or really is then. it? I don't know. It's more Midsummer than anything. Is it anything. the ruins? Yeah. But, it, yeah. But yeah, so this one is completely a different vibe. This one I think would be more suited for like an easier watch for people. Yeah, I think... It, yeah, this would be like a, a more well-rounded kind of like... Eh, probably generally people will like it. Mm-hmm. Or at least not have a problem watching it right yeah no. exactly like yeah. you could throw it on with like a group of friends and not have, have to be like guys i swear it's gonna get good yeah it's not, it's not really a thinker <laughs> yeah but i mean that in a good way like it's a good time yeah so yeah it's a ride it's, it's a wild wild ride well, let's dive into it shall we yeah we get our we open up with this like weird rich family montage like these people who live in a mansion kind of going about their day doing things Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and then we cut to three people who are robbing a suburban home and honestly like the the way this movie is edited or like the like you know the shots are cut it it reminds me so much of edgar wright movies especially this beginning yeah it's like the first thing i thought of Mm mm-hmm I, I can know. see that. It's it's really random. Kind of like Scott Pilgrim that. or Shaun of the Dead ish. Yeah. It's what mm-hmm. yeah, just especially this like robbery scene in the beginning. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're doing like a local, like you said, like a local suburban home robbery. And uh, we are introduced to our three, I guess, like lead characters, if you want to say. Casper, Iris, and Dodge. We find out that Iris, so Iris and Dodge are a couple and Iris is two months pregnant. And Casper, unfortunately, his dad has a gambling problem and his dad is being held basically captive by this sleazy strip club owner who i guess is you know the money is owed to and casper has to pay him ten thousand dollars to pay off his gambling debt or his dad will die so because everyone in the group needs money and iris is like a cater waiter kind of thing she agrees to get them in to this fancy house with her since she has to do this job at this very wealthy family's home and they're going to rob the place. Yeah. She's hesitant because it's like Fort Knox. <laughs> mm-hmm. She's all kinds of security. Tons of cameras. Everything is under lock. Like lock key camera. Everything. But they're going to try. And they do. It's well, very strange. <laughs> well, they kind of. They, they will get there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do they? So they arrive and they're greeted by a speaker box where Robin Tunney plays the matriarch of the family Roxanne she says who the fuck are these people you're not who I wanted but Iris is there who has been in this home many times and she's like Mrs. Dawson it's me Iris like you know the other two guys are they both came down with something and so everything's fine they come in and immediately Roxanne is like you two boys look like shit honestly though she like this entire movie honestly but especially like in this moment looks like she's like having like on, she's on the verge of like a mental collapse <laughs> yes especially yes. with the way that she talks to iris like alone in the kitchen about how everything has to be perfect and she's literally like holding back tears like truly and honestly and iris is just like okay why? she has those watery nev campbell eyes <laughs> 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 which is funny because they were in the craft together hey. you know she picked up a thing or two from old nev <laughs> <laughs> i know oh man but yeah she sends the two boys with her daughter alexis to go and get changed and borrow clothes from her brother elliot who's a complete psychopath i mean yeah but especially the dad who we are introduced to he's his name is patrick he looks like a pirate captain he does i also want to call him frederick for some reason like he looks like a frederick and not a patrick it's like a pirate captain. He does. <laughs> <laughs> it's the weird moustache. <laughs> the moustache and the smoking it's the, jacket. It's the weird moustache goatee combo and the smoking jacket and the psycho eyes. With like a little bit. Do I detect a little bit of guy liner? Oh, I feel like I detect I feel, a little bit of guy liner. I feel like I man. detect a lot of things about this guy. Mm-hmm. Red flags. The number Red flag one city. thing. Yeah, he literally walks in and very much like is looming he's like, like a sniffing looming her yes <laughs> it's like he can smell that iris is pregnant and smell the fear in roxanne's that body and aura right? she looks sad more than anything yeah sad scared and then they do mention uh patrick frederick whatever his name is he's like oh milo no mickey right mickey, yeah, mickey. like he's downstairs and iris who's been to the home many times has a report with these people she says well at least i thought so it seems like Iris has been here before, right? Yeah. Except, what's his face? Elliot is like, who's this? You know? It, yeah, that I'm is confused. a weird thing. I, yeah, I didn't notice that. Um, Unless maybe because... the kids aren't around for some of these other events. Like maybe they're like adults only. Because this is like a special event. Yeah. Well, she, yeah, because she does mention that she knows the family. Right. Cause she, and she even says in the beginning, they're a good family. Uh-huh. I don't know where she got that from, but it's the most non-accurate thing i've ever heard in my life right because just just off the bat it's weird the vibes are weird maybe this is the first like full well how do you say you know the family but anyway she says who's mickey because iris has been here before and roxanne looks absolutely terrified and she says mickey's our dog okay sure jan that's suspicious (laughs) i feel like that cardi b like that's suspicious (laughs) (laughs) that's weird um so yeah whatever um they go upstairs the two boys with alexis they barge into elliot's room and like i don't know it's this whole weird thing where 
like throughout the movie they're talking about iris as if a they've never seen her before and b that iris doesn't kind of resemble alexis which is weird considering it seems like elliot wants to fuck this iris so like does he want to fuck his sister or what i mean because there are so many right there's nothing would surprise me about this family (laughs) true true like truly (laughs) yeah so they get they get changed and casper while he's changing he notices a room with like a suspicious looking painting that when you move it there's a safe behind and uh dodge he ends up finding the control room so they're like okay and they also find that gun in the drawer yeah casper finds a gun real random to have it in the guest room (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i wonder how many guests they're really hosting and entertaining you know that's true so everything's kind of like coming together they're kind of forming a plan but also guests begin to arrive and there's this one guy milo who looks super important lance reddick i know rest Rest in in peace peace. oh my god he's such a good was such a good actor i know he plays milo who seems to kind of be at the helm of this this meeting Mm -hmm. and he's accompanied by a terrified looking girl named becca or they call her rebecca rebecca whatever yeah yeah she looks equal parts terrified and also pissed off that she's there yeah and she even mouths like help me to the guys right when they walk in so we're like okay (laughs) yeah Okay, what is going on? Yeah. Um, yeah, Milo looks important. Roxanne, so they all sit down to eat dinner. Well, no, I guess but before then she gives a toast like in the, the foyer. It's a weird toast. It's weird. Well, all the toasts in this movie are weird. But like, you know, you can kind of so this movie isn't like whereas our, our previous week's movie, The Feast, there's this weird lingering sense of dread and weird things happen and you don't really know why until the end. This movie there is also kind of like something weird looming in the air, but you can kind of piece together. What's I mean, happening? like you can kind of figure out what it is. But like her speech, she's like, "Yeah, I just welcome to our third annual, um, you know, woo." And then she's like, "I want to tell you a story. I was hiking. And there was a man, and he just was like disgusting, and he was alone, and you could tell that nobody was looking for him, and he probably was nothing to nobody, and nobody would miss him." if he were to just disappear but i left him and i just wanted to tell you that (laughs) okay okay thanks for sharing that's like that's the thing they're all so weird like all the other guy like younger guys that show up with them they're all like doing coke and you know like they're douchebags and they're trying to like like verbally harass dodge and sexually harass iris (laughs) right like everyone's a douchebag yeah everyone sucks everyone sucks here but it's all like okay so are they just like rich douchebags and just like flexing or right. like is actually like, is there something going on because they the only thing she says is like welcome to the annual reunion right like third and she says this is our third annual and yeah. then nothing and then third nothing annual after. what and third annual what <laughs> exactly what the fuck is this so um they basically sit at the dinner table and Patrick so Milo was like oh Patrick you know like why don't you start us off because he's like I remember when all of you guys were like you know first coming to me and yada yada Patrick why don't you start us off and Patrick stands up and he says my name is Patrick and I'm an addict and like, hi Patrick you know so you're thinking like okay for those of you who aren't piecing this together you're thinking it's some kind of like alcoholics anonymous narcotics anonymous like whatever you know it's they're they're addicts and he says that it's been just over four years since he's like indulged he doesn't say you know he's like it's been four years and some they tiptoe around some things on purpose (laughs) yeah and he's like so um you know it's been it's been a while and but do i miss it Mm -hmm. yeah he's like i do this all for my family (laughs) and then we get ollie who's played by i think his name is diego bonetta Diego something Mm -hmm. I'll look it up because I feel bad when I do this um it's not like I don't have my phone next to me but he I recognize him from Scream Queens okay the tv show if you've ever seen it it's fantastic well at least season one was I didn't really watch season two but yeah I was like oh I know that guy um his name is yeah Diego Bonetta Mm -hmm. and he plays a guy named Ollie and Ollie stands up and he's like oh my god hi I'm Ollie I'm also you know 
an addict Mm -hmm. or you know whatever the fuck he is and he's so proud of himself and he offers to do a little treat for everyone by playing the guitar (laughs) but somebody's fucked up his guitar one of the douchebag coke heads yeah cam wait i wrote it down hold on cameron one of them i didn't actually write their names down because to me like they're all the same person (laughs) honestly uh let's see hold on same douchebag what the fuck why can't i find this oh cameron yeah cameron cameron's the one that fucks up his guitar at least we think because he just laughs and elliot gets all in his or i'm sorry ollie gets all in his face and he's like did you fuck on my guitar guy maybe did you think this is funny and he's like you are fucking with the wrong one i will fuck you up and milo kind of you know Sit down, him boys. Down. yeah yeah it reminded me so much i don't know why but if if anyone has watched detroit rock city the kiss movie well the movie featuring kiss um what's her face lynn shay mm-hmm. she gets so worked up at the church and she's like don't you ever, ever. and the priest is like calm down and she's like oh, okay. Easy. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> it's it's giving that energy for sure mm. oh man uh, meanwhile our three intruders <laughs> mm-hmm. um dodge and Cass decided that the best way to go about getting into the safe is to cut the power because it's an electronic safe mm-hmm. so they work together um to cut the power in that whole situation but it does ultimately end up getting thwarted and things go wrong here because while we see we are like simultaneously cutting back and forth between the dinner party and the three robbers. Um, Roxanne gives a speech and she basically is like, you know, unlike my husband, I miss it. I miss the thrill and the rush of feeling alive and feeling so like small and, you know, it's crazy the the rush you get and I, I really miss it. But then I look into my children's eyes and I think like I do this all for them while she's saying all of that, we see that Elliot has gotten up from the table and before he can catch Dodge in the room by like the power source, Dodge kind of runs into the hallway and he's like, what are you doing? And Dodge is like, I'm looking for the bathroom. And he's like, oh, you forgot where it is already because Dodge had changed in the bathroom earlier in the movie. And he's like, don't worry, it's right through here. And so Dodge, like an idiot, goes with him mm-hmm. to the bathroom where, to be fair, there was a bathroom. But Elliot doesn't leave the bathroom. <laughs> no. And he's talking to him about Iris again. and like just taunting him. Yeah. Hey, creeps. Looking for more frightfully good content? Head it over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash frightmightpodcast to help support the show. We have current movie reviews, spooky cocktail recipes to match our theme of the month that you can enjoy for 21 and over. Or not. I'm not your parent. (laughs) For legal reasons, I must say this. We play games, trivia, literal fright fights, and much, much more. If you head over to patreon.com slash frightmikepodcast. Again, patreon.com slash frightmikepodcast. You can find everything over there. And again, it is a great way to support the show. We greatly appreciate it. And we love you guys. Bye. Bye. But unfortunately, Elliot's like, hey, let me see your hand. And he's like, no, I don't want you to see my, I don't want to touch you. I don't want to touch you. And then Elliot pulls out like a fucking meat cleaver and not only hacks his hand off, but pushes him into the tub and then just hacks the shit Goes to town. So and it's just a like dodge. It's just like a touch alarming because we're thinking like, okay, it's like the movie Don't Breathe where like, like you have like three essential kind of main characters and you're like, oh, wow. Okay. Yep. <laughs> like, oh, he's dead. He, he, he ain't coming back. <laughs> Immediately. Like he's dead, dead. Yeah. And because he's not there to fuck with the power, the alarm is triggered. And the sh- the windows all get shuttered down. It's purge shutters. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the alarm goes off. And so Patrick is sent, you know, he's, he tells everyone, he's like, everybody just hang out. I'm going to go see what's going on. And he's looking at the cameras and he sees that Elliot and Dodge go into this room and he says, oh, shit. It's so fucked when he comes out because everyone realizes what he's done. And then when Iris goes to the top of the stairs and looks over, he's 
clapping hands and we don't see it right away but he's holding dodge's hand and so she realizes what happened yeah she runs past them into the bathroom just for like visual confirmation that her baby daddy is slaughtered no more. and they tried to grab her casper ends up coming out um patrick sees him i keep wanting to call him frederick i don't he looks like a frederick to me <laughs> but so he's choking casper against the wall um the mom so, slaps the shit out of him <laughs> uh-huh uh-huh and then iris is struggling you know whatever and milo's just watching all of the or no milo's not there yet right or he has yes he's coming to the top of the stairs and so um essentially casper is let go iris runs down the stairs um somebody falls down the stairs but she's being chased by cameron and his like the other loser brother mm-hmm. or whatever yeah yeah so she locks herself in the closet but then milo scolds elliot Mm-hmm. You know, just calling him weak because he didn't even try to yeah. not be a fucking crazy Yeah, and he <laughs> person. even... T- Elliot even tells his dad, like, I had to feed it. Like, I, or I had to let it out. That's what he says. And I just feel like at this moment, like, once once patrick sees his son do this it's like he's unhinged mm-hmm. like he's got the blood lust <laughs> it's like the fuck um have you ever seen blades of glory when he goes to yeah. sex addicts anonymous yeah. and then everyone's like getting hot and bothered they're all fucking in the bushes after. <laughs> it's like once they smell blood yeah. all of a sudden it, it becomes like a free-for-all it's like he had crazy eyes before but now it's like even more yeah it's it's wild Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he doesn't even care it's like milo is like trying to tame all of them down (laughs) yep yep um casper locks himself in the room with the safe also he barricades the door tries to get out realizes he can't um but milo comes to the other side of the door and casper we see grabs the gun and so they're negotiating through the door and he, you know, Casper's like, I just want to go home, man. Like, I just want to go home. And Milo's like, well, we can't really just, like, let you go. Like, how do we know that you're not going to go to the police? And, you know, how about we give you $10,000? And Casper's like, you killed my friend. I yeah. I want $100,000. Well, and, too, like, he explains what they're all doing there. Mm-hmm. And basically it's that he runs this, like, society of recovering murders and this was like the reunion dinner yeah this was the and third was the annual whole, reunion this is the third annual <laughs> yep yep and that's the whole purpose of all of them being here which i will say for the way that the movie plays out you'd think for a house full of murderers maybe they would be better at it yeah you'd think but these three like nobody jabronis or I guess, yeah especially the ones downstairs who are trying to get in the closet <laughs> yeah they just like aren't they're not good you know maybe they're, they're just, sloppy they're yeah they're real sloppy maybe because it's been a while i guess yeah maybe it's been a while well it's been three years <laughs> <laughs> well for some of them yeah that's true you know um but we do see so iris when she runs downstairs she goes through the kitchen and she ends up grabbing so we see becca who had recent like when they were still all at dinner before she went south she got up from the table to quote unquote like use the bathroom or whatever and she was just kind of standing in the kitchen with Iris, thumbing a knife. So you're like, oh boy, shit's going to go down. But what happens to Becca is she just ends up slashing her wrists and bleeding out. Um, Iris takes... Now, do we think she... What was her story? What do we think I don't, it was? Maybe she just, like, didn't want to be reformed. Yeah, I was thinking, like... Because, you know, at first, you're like, is she being, like, held here against her will? But maybe she was just, like, so... Like, maybe she just had all this remorse that she did it or she was just that crazy that she was like i can't cope with this anymore well i'm wondering if she was being like okay so milo when he agrees to casper's terms and patrick overhears he's like i'm not paying that kid a hundred thousand dollars and milo says yeah which i love how they explain say that right outside the door where he can hear he can obviously hear and milo's like yeah no we're obvious we're obviously wink wink not gonna (laughs) give him the you know basically milo is saying we're gonna pump this kid so full of drugs and let him out of here that he's going to be thrown in jail for possession or using or whatever and he's gonna become a junkie and that's the direction his life is going anyway and you know i i can pull a ton of strings down you know like at the station or the jail or with whoever so this milo guy seems super important so i don't know if maybe becca didn't want to reform or was maybe being like held or like maybe she was being pumped with these drugs or i I don't know what the fuck there's something going on with this becca where she just was like i fucking had it i'd rather die than like 
be a reformed be a murderer or be a part yeah be a part of this mm. program whatever it is because maybe he was essentially like if you don't stop killing people and join my program i will turn you into like a junkie or yeah. was, you know like who the fuck knows? i'll ruin your life yeah because milo does not let hair like he's like holding her hand the whole time he when she goes to get up from the bathroom he tries to like sit her down and she's like fuck no right it's crazy it's just like it, it's just interesting because she's such a like minor character but i feel like she adds so much to it just because of the fact that we they're all like psychos yeah but she you know we're like what's her story you she know clearly so there's like something so going different. on where the rest of them are like dickheads <laughs> yeah and there's like something there's like a different layer with her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so she um iris finds her dead in the kitchen because she could not handle what was whatever was happening yep and when she goes to hide in a closet, that's when we get, we get, um, what's his face? Cameron. And then I think the other kid's name is Jeremy. And in the beginning, Milo says something about them being blood brothers, which I don't know if that's like a wink, wink, like they're like actual related or they just like to kill together kind of thing. Probably. They're a duo. <laughs> yeah. So they're like threatening. They're taunting Iris. They're like, you know, like, here, kitty, kitty, like, come on out, whatever. And Alexis comes down and she's like, get the fuck out of here. And because Alexis had slashed, I believe it's Jeremy's cheek with the knife. He has this, like, crazy gash in his cheek. And she grabs him, like, by the balls. And she's like, fuck off. And she uh, essentially coaxes um, Iris out of the room. Yeah, she agrees to help her. And I think at this point, Cass has the gun in it. After overhearing the entire plan about how he's not really getting paid, he holds them at gunpoint. Um, yes. Milo and Patrick and Roxanne. And Elliot. And Elliot. And he forces them all downstairs where Alexis and Iris are kind of just coming. They all end up in this foyer to get the foyer together. And basically chaos breaks out because oh, yeah. <laughs> Elliot attacks Casper. The gun goes flying. Patrick grabs the gun. Somebody, I think it's Jeremy, is choking Iris. Elliot is attacking Casper with some kind of knife, blade, butcher. I think it's the butcher knife. Mm -hmm. Milo doesn't know who to help first. He's yelling at Jeremy to stop choking out Iris while he's watching Elliot try to slash at Casper. And he says, like, he's finally had enough. He goes to Jeremy with the gash in his cheek and pulls the chunk oh. of flesh off of his face before beating the shit out of it. Like, beating him to death. Yeah. And he says, no more killing. There will be no more killing. <laughs> and then Patrick shoots him in the face. <laughs> Yikes. Um, yeah. yeah. So, shit's really gone So, south. the only person that had any kind of handle on this whole situation is no more. Yep anarchy <laughs> and casper runs alexis and iris run they all three run into each other and they go into hiding thanks to alexis's help and casper says please protect iris she is two months pregnant and she says you got it boss we are getting out of here they now scooby do themselves in that uh th that bookcase room uh -huh. the real red room of pain uh-huh it's and like a museum of body parts it's <laughs> true the museum of death honestly like there's Murder. there's body parts and jars the, there's like weird a weird gallery wall of all the murders mm -hmm. <laughs> and a family photo that includes every family member that we've seen plus a weird looking one yes and guess who that might be mickey mm -hmm. and elliot finds patrick sitting at a desk fucking with some music box that looks like it's straight out of anastasia and he's like, so they are where Mickey is, I bet. Do you know what we call that? Do you know what we call that? Serendipity, bitch. <laughs> and they have like a loudspeaker that goes through the home. Yeah. And he begs Alexis to come out and says, I know that you basically don't want to be part of this family or you hate this family, but we love you. Come on out. And, and you think for a second she might crack yeah but she don't she does not but then they start playing but she she girds her loins though for what's about to happen yeah because at that moment they unleash this psycho 
son. You thought Elliot was bad. This is like next level. Yeah. He reminds me of some kind of like fucked up twisted metal character or something. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is crazy. They have another son who they've held in captivity and they unleash him on to the three of them. He then jumps on top of Iris and eats her fucking face off. <laughs> yeah. Which is great because I think literally maybe three minutes before that, he was like, please protect her at all costs. Yeah, cost. right. She She's backs stupid. the fuck way off. <laughs> yup. Yeah, she said, ooh. And then because Casper has armed himself with a samurai sword, he slices Mickey literally in half. Like, well, I guess slices his head in half. Oh, yeah. Right down the middle. Yeah. Right, but right after Mickey says, thank you. Have a nice day. Or some weird shit like yeah, that. Yeah, like what? <laughs> I don't know psycho psycho behavior um but it's like crazy because casper that, again it's like alarming <laughs> yeah and like, we thought like, iris was gonna fuck? make it man <laughs> we thought she was gonna be the one to make it out yeah like a final girl style absolutely mm-hmm. not she could not even see no no there was no face to be had no it was literally not off yeah and they even show it at the end they do they do <laughs> but casper he like to himself almost he's like what the fuck is happening <laughs> What the fuck? Well, because he's lo- <laughs> because he's looking at his friend on the floor, and he's like, "This isn't happening. This isn't yeah. happening, man. <laughs> this is fucking sick." And uh, Alexis very quickly is like, "We have no time for emotions. Let, let's like, shape this up a, and like, ship this out. is another day for her." Yeah, and so they kind of Jesus. they sneak out. You think Becca was like a Mickey prize? Ooh. You know, like you know how you bring like Ooh. a bottle of wine to dinner. Like they brought a person <gasps> to feed to him. Wait. Ooh. Yes. Wait. Yes. <laughs> if not, I like that idea. <laughs> I do. I like that idea. But like, why would Milo bring it? Uh, yeah. yeah and why isn't Mickey because, part of this? Because he's too far gone. Because. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, he's too far gone. But yeah, Milo brings it because they're because Patrick and Roxanne are the ones that are hosting, and Fair he's enough. just trying to be a gracious guest. He's bringing a fucking bottle of wine for, for Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> and her name is Becca. <laughs> what a fine wine. She's a 1990. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so they, like, escape their little hidey hole thing just to be confronted by Patrick, who, like, really doesn't get very far because he's, he's attacking Casper. It's all talk, man. Yeah. And Alexis is like, Dad, stop. And then they're having, like, a very nice kind of, like, father-daughter discussion. Mm-hmm. And Casper just samurai guts him oh yeah he i mean he really weird wields that sword well I mean, yeah it really suits him it really does yeah he got some mm-hmm. we uh we do see guts spell out you sure do <laughs> you sure do he All spills his guts to alexis before spilling his guts on to, the floor to <laughs> yes and the two make it outside and you think like holy shit this is happening but then cameron comes to, from like the right with a Chainsaw? chainsaw yeah <laughs> excuse me oh my god i had to sneeze. <laughs> bless me um but you know casper again with the with the samurai sword cutting him down at the knees man and i need to say this like right now i just feel like most of the time when someone is wielding a chainsaw in a horror movie i feel like at least 85 percent of the time if not 90 they get it themselves yeah true. they don't know how to properly handle the chainsaw that it's, they are wielding. Well, it's even like even in the horror video games, like Dead Rising One, like the original Dead Rising, there is a clown that you have to fight that mm-hmm. has these badass chainsaws, mm-hmm. and when you defeat him, his death is that he falls on top of his own chainsaws. But then yeah. you get to use them in the game, and they're really fun. It's just always a thing. Yeah, yeah. I it's feel true. like they always get it. They do. Yeah, cause especially he, this wiener kid who like the chainsaw definitely weighs more than he does. For sure. For so sure. He, you know, and yeah. he's crazy. He's crazy and he's swinging it around like it's nothing. Mm-hmm. But he falls on top of it uh, because he gets cut down like literally at the legs. Uh, but unfortunately, Elliot does come swinging from the left, knocks him out, ties them to chairs that are somehow rigged over a pool. Yeah, it's a very elaborate setup for uh, just like knocking them out and then having them all set up like saw trap style. Exactly. And Elliot informs the two of them that... They must cut one of their ropes 
within 60 seconds and if nobody cuts the rope he will cut both of the ropes and they will both fall into the water and drown and alexis is like man fuck this and she cuts casper's rope he falls into the water but then alexis falls into the water because elliot is a psycho and he cuts hers too Mm -hmm. and just before they're about to drown the mom roxanne pulls up kills elliot (laughs) yeah it's amazing and pulls him out of the water oh my god we love roxanne she realizes what a fucking monster she created yup and she's like i feel like she just needed to kill you know she needed one more yeah she's like damn i really and she didn't care that it was her own blood right exactly yeah and we do get like a jason Voorhees style thing because she's like man he's a piece of shit and then elliot's like but then alexis (laughs) out of the water yeah and then back down he goes and you think like wow she because basically roxanne is like what's it gonna take for you to just shut the fuck up about all this you know (laughs) know what i mean and he says 100 grand man i would ask for way more car right oh please I'm, ex- I'm extorting the shit i want 50 million <laughs> i'm gonna be like dr evil up here oh my god 50 million dollars i would have asked for a quarter of a mil and a car because then i could sell that for more money mm-hmm. you yeah. know oh yeah but I he has he asked for a cool 100k and a car chill dope i love that and you think like oh cool the movie's gonna end but it doesn't it, I, you know, to be honest, I really, I really wish it had ended at this point. But, but you know, whatever. Yeah, you know, I didn't mind the extra, the little bonus. two minutes. Of- I just didn't understand. So Cass goes back to the strip club to go get his dad, but then just like hacks up everybody, including the strippers. <laughs> well, isn't it funny how a party for reformed monsters has in turn created a monster? Ooh. <gasps> it's like a sickness that spreads. Exactly. <laughs> I liked it. I enjoyed it. Unhinged. I thought, ooh, what a fun little bonus. Unhinged. Because mm-hmm. you think, like, oh, he's asking 100 grand because he's going to keep 90K, pay yeah. his dad's, you know, bills or whatever. No, he's, he's keeping it He's all. just killing everybody. Yeah. Because fuck it. What's one more? Yeah, really. Mm hmm. It's a wild ride. I know. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's a fun movie. It really is. What would you rate it? What are you going to rate it? I'm going to give it a three and a half out of five. <gasps> Me too. Fuck yeah. Oh my God. We're so simpatico. Simpatico. Oh, no. Yeah, because it's fun. It's not bad, but is it four? Is it a four and above? No. It's just a nice fun little bloody A fun movie. romp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Really if you're is. looking for action, blood, a lot of gore, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. good times, psychos. And like a nice chill. I think it comes in at under an hour and a half. Yeah. I think it's like an hour 22 or something. It's a good party movie. Truly is. For your next monster party. <gasps> <Yes>. hey. Oh. <laughs> oh. I love it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Love that. I know. I feel like there's not whole, there's not a whole lot to say on this movie either. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It is. Yeah. I mean, everybody does a decent job in it. There's a lot of surprising moments. Um, I think if you didn't know what like the twist was i mean it kind of lets you in on it um i think the first time i saw this i was like thinking maybe like vampires because it's like always vampires but okay it was a nice like unique idea to have it just be like oh it's a reformed murderers club <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that's like a nice little unique thing yeah hasn't been done before that i know of right well, well i like it yeah i liked it it was good yeah but that is just our opinion on Monster Party. If you've seen it, let us know what you think about it. If you haven't, we highly recommend checking it out. Let us know your thoughts over on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. We are on all those social platforms at Fright Mike Podcast. So uh, give us your opinions. You know, we love to hear from you all. Of course. If you like the show and you want to hear more, you know, recommend us to... Uh, your close friends and enemies, we would appreciate it. A nice comment or a share goes a long way for us. Tell your dog. Honestly, we love yeah. them. We're animal lovers. We yeah. love them. We're pet friendly, too. <laughs> they listen. They know. They, they can know. hear my voice. <laughs> oh, they fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you don't mind, after you're done, after after I'm done rambling here, uh, if you want to give us a nice five-star review or rating, wherever you are listening, we would really appreciate that, uh, especially on Apple, on Spotify. We're, yeah, yeah, wherever. Wherever, wherever man. Yeah. But until next time, I'm Liz. I'm Sam. Rest, Rest in, in peace. peace.